Luke 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of wipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe has been laid to the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, um, who, uh, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. God bless the reading of his word. We have just read Luke 3. It is about the ministry of John the Baptist. Last week, we read Luke 1, the story of his miraculous birth. Although John's parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth, are well on in age, God blesses them with the gift of their son, John. Their son, John, has a special calling in life. He fulfills the words of Isaiah the prophet in the Old Testament. A voice of one calling, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Isaiah 40 verse 3. How does John fulfill his special calling in life? This is what Luke 3 verse 3 says. He went into all the country around the, uh, the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People are coming to John uh, in the River Jordan for the baptism of the repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, people are coming to John to be baptized. They want to show that they are serious about getting their act together for God. All kinds of people come to hear John the Baptist, prostitutes and farmers tax collectors and soldiers. Rome appoints these tax collectors. They collect more than what they are supposed to. They pocket this extra money. John discourages them. Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Luke 3 verse 13. Even soldiers come to hear John the Baptist. What does John tell them? Then some soldiers asked him, what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. Luke 3 verse 14. John the Baptist has the status of a pop star. Uh, people come from all over to hear him. They come from Jerusalem, in all Judea, and the whole region of Jordan. John must be getting his message right. He must have the right formula, formula does he? However, look at John's message. John the Baptist isn't exactly a touchy-feely person in his message. He says, you need to repent. You need to, to get your act together. Otherwise, you will be thrown into the fire. Uh, John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce food fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to you say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe has been laid to the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Luke 3 verses 7 to 19. Show me that you are serious about God. Fruit 
of fire. Take your pick. Don't rely on the fact that you have Abraham as your ancestor. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David or Solomon, they're not going to save you. They don't mean a thing. God can raise up new people for himself from these stones. God's axe is ready. Any tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You need to look at yourself. Get serious with God. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It is not John who brings the forgiveness of sins. It is Jesus. He brings the forgiveness of sins. However, John warns us that we need to get serious about our lives before God first. I will baptize you with water, but that's on the outside. You need to have your moment with God on the inside. You need to show God that you are serious about God in your hearts. That's what repentance means. The New Testament Greek word that is translated to repent means to change your mind or to change your attitude before God. God is concerned about what we look like on the inside. God is not concerned about how we appear to others on the outside. Repenting is realizing that we mess things up internally before God. We hurt ourselves and we hurt other people. We need Jesus to come into our lives to forgive us of our sins and to turn our lives around. Here is a story from someone we'll call David. Uh, he and his wife just moved into a new condominium. My wife and I recently moved into a condominium with, that needed extensive renovation. Uh, the walls were dingy, the woodwork was dirty, and the paint was cracked and peeling. I was tempted to simply start painting in an attempt to cover up the dirt and flaws, hoping these blemishes would not show through the fresh paint. I knew from past experience, however, that unless the paint and dirt were removed, new paint would not hide the flaws. The temptation to take a shortcut to cover up the dirt and flaws rather than to remove them reminded me of the times in my spiritual journey that I've attempted to cover up my sins, my mistakes and my faults. Just as fresh pain won't adhere to dirty and peeling walls, our attempts to hide our sins will not improve our spiritual lives. The only lasting way to deal with our sins, our acts of willful disobedience and self-conceit, is to remove, or, or, and self-deceit rather, is to remove them through repentance and begin anew. Uh, when we face our sins, God's forgiving grace not only changes our thoughts and actions, it will also change our hearts. Our lives will reflect the forgiving love of God at work within us. Remember, God's forgiving grace changes our hearts first before God's forgiving grace changes our thoughts and our actions. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. Luke 3 verse 15. John is the superstar who is preaching at the River Jordan. Is he more than a pop star? Is he the Messiah? John is in the limelight, yet he does not want to draw attention to himself. John is not the Messiah. He prepares people for the Messiah. He prepares people for the forgiveness of sins. He is not the Messiah who grants the forgiveness of sins. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When people are baptized by John, they show that they mean business with God. However, it is more than showing that you mean business with God. It is also an act of cleansing. The New Testament Greek word that is translated as to baptize also means 
means to immerse or to dip. As people go into the water, there is an experience of a new start. Uh, this will help them in their repentance. Just as their bodies are cleansed by the water, their souls are now cleansed by God as they come up out of the water. John clearly says that he is not the Messiah. He says that one more powerful than him will come. John is not even worthy to untie the straps of this person's sandals. However, more importantly, this Messiah is not a military Messiah that Israel is waiting for. He will not liberate Israel from the Romans. Instead, this Messiah will baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Just as John immerses or dips people at the River Jordan, the Messiah will immerse or dip people with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God. There is God the Father, there is God the Son, and there is God the Holy Spirit. The Father is the one who creates and provides. The Son is the one who reveals God to us and saves us. The Holy Spirit is the one who changes us spiritually on the inside. The Holy Spirit cleans us so that we can come into God's presence. The Holy Spirit empowers us for the Christian life like wood burning to give us fire. The Holy Spirit is God residing in our hearts. John says that Jesus the Messiah will now baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus will now immerse or dip us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We need help to repent or change our lives. The Holy Spirit is God's personal presence in us, changing us and turning our lives around. The Holy Spirit is God coming to live in our hearts and giving us the strength to live the Christian life. Most of us have read our Bibles and have enjoyed a profound experience of reading our Bibles. Uh, somehow when we read the Bible, we get guidance and assurance from God. Uh, we like to say we hear God. Uh, God speaks to us through the words of the Bible. Something happens in our hearts when we read the Bible. We feel touched by God. This is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God. Uh, he is God working in our hearts uh, to give us understanding of what we are reading. Who gives us this Holy Spirit? It is Jesus who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. It is Jesus who puts this Holy Spirit into our hearts. It is Jesus who gives us this Holy Spirit. Luke 3 focuses on the ministry of John the Baptist. However, by the end of Luke 3, John is eclipsed by the Messiah himself. In Luke 3, 21, when no one is looking, Jesus comes to the River Jordan. He asks to be baptized by John. Very often, Jesus comes to us unexpectedly. Um, he comes out of nowhere at a time and place that we least expect him. Uh, very often, Jesus tone turns up at our doors and surprises us. Luke 3, 21 to 22. Uh, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit, Spirit descended on him in body form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you... I am well pleased. Jesus prays. Heaven opens. Christmas happens. The Father speaks thunderously from heaven. The Son is baptized at the River Jordan. The Holy Spirit descends on the Son like a dove. God, the human being, has landed on earth. The triune God reveals himself the Father speaks from heaven. The Son is God who comes down from heaven. The Holy Spirit descends on the Son, Jesus, like a dove from heaven. We are not alone. God 
is with us. God the Father is with us. God the Son is with us. God the Holy Spirit is with us. Heaven has come down to us. Tim Keller is the pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York. He shares that Christmas is more than what he calls a moral paradigm. Uh, Christmas is God wanting to reach out to us. So says Tim Keller. If Jesus didn't come, the story of Christmas is, is one more moral paradigm to crush you. If Jesus didn't come, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere around these Christmas stories that say we need to be sacrificing, we need to be humble, we need to be loving. Uh, all that will crush you into the ground. But if Jesus Christ is actually God come in the flesh, you are going to know much more about God. If Jesus is who he says he, he is, we have a 500-page autobiography from God, in a sense. And our understanding will be vastly more personal and specific than any philosophy or religion could give us. Because of Christmas, look at what God has done to get you to know Him personally. If the Son would come all this way to become a real person to you, won't you think the Holy Spirit will do anything all uh, would do anything in His power to make Jesus a real person to you in your heart? Christmas is an invitation by God. Look at what I've done to come near to you. Come, draw near to me. I don't want to be a concept. I want to be your friend. Look at what I've done to come near you. Now come near to me. I don't want to be a concept. I want to be a friend. This Christmas, let me be your friend. I am more than a decoration on the Christmas tree. I am God. I am Jesus. God who becomes a human being. Amen.